Let me start with Anil Bhardwaj. Anil, uh, you have long been working on the issues concerning MSMEs, particularly issues related to the regulatory environment. Both of us also have been serving on a better regulatory environmental, better regulatory environmental group of the Department of Industries Policy and Promotion called BRAG. Uh, an unusual acronym, but having said that, you know, it has not reached anywhere at all. Uh, the kind of, when you look at the process itself, and that example could apply across the, across the board. So where do we see the, you know, uh, what are the kind of challenges for MSMEs other than financial challenges, which is not the top, part of this uh, topic, uh, not a topic of this event. I mean, it's an extremely critical issue. Having said that, let me, uh, and how workers, consumers, and low-income citizens can be benefited through regulatory reforms aimed at weeding out structural challenges of MSMEs. And as I said, if you could also, you know, abstract uh, the impact on micro entrepreneurs, that would be very helpful. Over to you, Samir. Uh, Anil. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Pradeep ji, uh, Samir ji, Arun Mehra ji, and uh, fellow panelists. I recently made a small contribution in the form of an article to a volume on reviving jobs, uh, which has been brought out by Penguin. And that gave me a chance to do a deep dive into the issue at hand of ease of living. My today's presentation is based on that article. Uh, we are aware that more than 90% of the workforce and about 50% of national product in India are accounted for by the informal economy. And one of the most important reasons for informality is the cost of being formal. If formality imposes a very high cost, the majority of small entrepreneurs, self-employed people choose to work in formality. In India, the three biggest policy and structural stumbling blocks that I see apart from finance and other regulatory issues, which stigmatize the informal sector and self-employed people and put onerous burdens on them are three. Number one, zoning policies in urban areas. Two, electricity charges on type of uses. Three, house tax on commercial enterprises. Let me begin with joining policies, which is, I think, the fountainhead for many of the problems. The dwindling economic opportunities in the agriculture sector and the rapid economic growth fueled largely by the services sector in urban areas is pulling masses from rural to urban, urban centers. Towns and cities are swelling. While the urban population was, as you know, uh, barely 11.4% in 1901, uh, it increased to 34% in 2017, and it is expected to cross 40% by 2030. But urban planning is lagging by decades. Almost everywhere, municipalities and urban local bodies are in shambles. Most are understaffed, do not audit accounts, and are practically bankrupt. During the colonial era, which you also mentioned, cities were imagined in binary terms, residential versus commercial, model towns uh, and defense and so on, from the perspective of collection of revenue in Texas. The same thinking continues even now. Historically, India has lived and sustained its economic activities not in binary terms, but in working and living spaces that overlap in thousands of artisan and textile clusters across the country. That made us Sone Kichidiya. Such a setting allowed family members to contribute to economic activity in a flexible manner and also allowed the passes of on to skills from one generation to another through informal mentorship. This bifurcation of cities into residential versus commercial and industrial zones may be all right for larger businesses, but for self-employed people, neither does it make any economic sense nor is it feasible. Meanwhile, Organized professionals like lawyers, chartered accountants, etc., have extracted concessions for themselves from uh, municipalities and uh, ULBs to work from residential areas. The ordinary self-employed Indian working from home has become a criminal. The current situation leaves citizens with limited employment opportunities with a cruel choice. Follow the law and die of hunger or break the law and... and uh, uh, I, uh, and, and survive uh, uh, just, um, and, and survive by buying peace with authorities. 
but its very setting means that excessive limits are placed on establishment operating two from minutes, home we anil two minutes okay so operating from Thank home you. working from an unauthorized area automatically disqualifies them from joining formal channels of finance and government support so they are condemned to operate at a sub optimal level and employment is confined to just the owner so the the uh, that would require allowing the dual use of properties with the right threshold like the maximum number of people employed maybe a two or three or use of electricity up to 10 kilowatt i mean we can find the parameters but the 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 crux is that we have to allow the dual use of property the second part is the electricity charges on type of use see before 2003 it was specifically said in electricity act 2003 that you cannot distinguish between the users of electricity whether you are uh, uh, i mean using electricity for home or for industrial purposes but later on changes were done and currently uh, different charges are levied on on the basis of type of users whether it is agriculture whether it is for home or whether it is for industrial purposes that has to go and because that has become uh, one of the uh, most important uh, uh you can say regulatory stick to beat the self employed and third is the house tax on the commercial enterprises the moment somebody is seen that you know you are working from home doing commercial activity the the charges of house house tax increases tremendously it ranges from anywhere between 2 to 3 times so people try to hide their economic activities and uh, work at sub optimal level so to conclude what i say that you know if we apply the 2080 rule that which are the 20% problems that account for 80% of the burden it is these three zoning policies and urban areas electricity charges and the type of uses and house tax on commercial enterprises if we address these three things which are doable simple i think we would be uh, saving our self employed people from lot of hardship thank you excellent